The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday on this uh, July the 15th, halfway through the month. What an interesting month, huh? And thank you to our wonderful hosts uh, starting off at 8 o'clock. And we're going right through today until uh, 5 o'clock. You have Tom O'Brien. So let's get right to the nitty gritties. And we've got the Dow up 9 at 18,515 after making a new all-time high today. We've got uh, the S&P down 0.72 at 2163 after making an all-time high today. you got the QQQ series. Let me get rid of this for the moment. At... Um, the Qs are at this particular point. I shouldn't have said Qs. I didn't have it in front of me. One, two, three. QQQ series. Of course, if you hit the right key, you want to get it. There you go. Qs at 111.86, having made a new recovery high, not an all-time high. The IWM right now is at 119.63 up 26, um, having made a recovery high. Leg B, peak B in the daily, uh, leg D in the weekly. You've got a very interesting situation here. The IYT, I want to go through these right now. It's the end of the week. Very important week. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the IYT, which is the transports, have had a really strong move up. This has to be considered a new A. Leg B unfolding as we speak, probably a peak B today. Um, but it's underneath the most important high, and that was the high of May, I think, last day of May. Oh, it was April. April the 22nd uh, at 146.07. It's at 143.38, down 54 cents. And we're seeing a little bit of a mixed market here. And uh, most importantly about this, what I'm looking at is there's a lot of resistance. But I think I'd like to add at this particular point the I. WB. I don't know how to ever talk about this. It's a very important index. It's the, the Russell 1000, not the 2000. In fact, let me, let, me, let me do this. Let me get rid of the 120 minute chart. Keep your eye on my charts. On the left, you'll see a strong leg B in the daily, a very strong, going from 100, under 111 to 120.45 this morning at 119.95, down four cents right now. That's the Russell 1000. Keep your eye. Here we go. And we're going to go to the IWM. Keep your eye. Just scan from the left to the middle to the right. Left is the daily. Weekly is the in the middle. And on the right, you've got a monthly. And there's no other way I can count this. This is in the Russell 1000 new monthly leg B. Very positive. So here we go. IWM coming up. Whoops. <laughs> IWM coming up. There it is. A little different chart. Look at the way you've got uh, the IWM, the 2000. Uh, the monthly chart is nearly as strong. The weekly chart is has just snuck today, uh, this week, I should say. It just snuck above that previous peak C minus that failed. <clears throat> but we've gone from 93.64 the week of February the 12th to 119, 120 today. That is really good action. But... Let's put, keep your eye, left side, middle, right side. Here we go. QQQ series, the NDX 100. <clears throat> closer to the IWB, closer to the 1000. So the IWM, the 2000, is lagging somewhat. Let me just quickly go into these charts. We've got a lot of callers waiting. Let's go. Gold is down six. Remember, I've been talking about gold being in a, <clears throat> a cell today. As I mentioned, didn't I mention in my newsletter? Uh, Traders Corner number eight, GLD, sell mode daily. Yes, yeah, sell mode daily, but not the weekly. <clears throat> so the weekly is still holding quite well, but the daily is at minus 6.9 at 1325. I think that gold is pulling back and you know, it needs a well deserved break. And this could go a well deserved consolidation, <laughs> let's not say break. And that should go into the end of uh, June. Um, we'll see what happens. All right. Now let's go to the um, copper. Copper's done very nicely. And copper might be suggesting that things are not quite as bad, especially if you put it together with, say, Alcoa. Um, Alcoa in the 
the aluminum area, which has had a very nice bounce, and let's still call it a bounce based on the monthly. And let's go to uh, something like, yeah, let's go to U.S. Steel, X, <clears throat> leg D, very strong move up. It's at 21.69. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, actually, I should mention just for um, clarity, my trade, my subscribers are long. We're long from 17.95. Uh, it's uh, at 21.69. Oh, up almost four points, nearly uh, 20 percent. So this is a very nice move. And look at the weekly ch monthly chart. That's a leg B. That's a big difference. And this is saying to me that there is some internal strength going on here. So let's go on here with the um, looking at, um, I need to look at the dollar, DXY. The dollar, in fact, is holding very nicely. It's at 96.45. Um, the weekly chart is just extended to a leg C. Not a very strong C, but it is a leg C nevertheless. And the monthly is getting that U-shaped pattern. The second U starting to improve. Hmm, let me see what happened to the British pound. British pound should be down a little bit. Yeah, it's down a little bit at 1.3238. So we might have had the move now in the British pound. You're going to watch this really closely. So uh, if Carlos is watching, I'd be taking a little bit off now because uh, the run was that extra double test this morning of the previous high of yesterday. <clears throat> and now you want to be a little take profits and have some left so that you can keep maybe a core position because the, the, the uh, currencies are still very mixed. Crude oil, right now we're going to crude oil, and crude oil is at 45.87, up 19 cents. Yeah, I just think it's kind of stuck. Uh, it's in a trading range, slightly lower lows, slightly high, lower highs at this particular point. One other thing that I'm missing here is I'm missing the EUR, USD. Um, yeah, that's pulling back quite sharply. But the most important thing here is the TLT. The TLT is the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund down one at 138.56. If you look at the TBT <clears throat> trading at 31.60, it's up 0.46. This is a very nice move. This is leg B. We are actually long a position in the TBT. We went long um, on Monday, on the 12th. And uh, it's acting quite nicely. I just couldn't treat this as a counter trend bounce, which I hope that we can play successfully. Enough with that. Let's go straight to our callers. We've got Ben in Tallahassee. Ben, how are you? Hey, Basil. Great. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Well, I just answered my own question on the S&P 500, so I was going to skip to silver real quick. Oh, okay. Your answer, the question, your answer is, I'm still bullish on the spot. Uh, on the, well, uh, the question on, on SLV Weekly. Okay. Is, do you see that as an E or an A? Um, at this point, I really don't have much choice because it snuck over the 200 period exponential moving average. The MACD is very strong. The stochastic is strong. But I have enough signs to say at this particular point, I'm going to call it an E <clears throat> with a chance that it could go to an F. But if it holds the 80, it's a 19.11. Actually, let me tell the folks, um, this is the iShares Silver Trust. It's acting very well on a very short-term basis. I think it's going to be pulling back. It's in peak E in the daily. It's really worth talking about. If you don't mind, can you hold on, Ben? I, I can, and, and you, you answer me, because to me it, it seems like it's either a perfect short or wait for a little pullback and buy. My, my thinking is pull back and buy, but if you don't mind, I'd like to follow it sure. up uh, yep. with a couple of other things. Sure. Okay, I'll be back with Ben and Tom straight after this break. Dow's up three, SMP's down two. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, Basil Chapman. We're back. Dow's down three. SP's down three. Uh, this is very interesting, and I'll talk about that as soon as we're done with our callers because I, I'll take just a moment for our technical Friday in a moment. But we're going to go back to the SLV trading in 1913. This is the iShares Silver Trust. So, Ben, what I'm looking at here is that silver played catch up and played catch up in a huge way to gold's big move. I think it's still in the phase it says <clears throat> there are buyers there. And there are buyers for a reason which is very difficult to perceive. I can make a case. <clears throat> I can make a case for gold as a currency of fear. And I'm not sure why gold didn't spike this morning. The horrible, horrible news from yesterday in Nice. And, um, that, and that's telling me that other forces are uh, involved here. So I'm going to suggest to you that there's a Chapman Wave two-bar reversal from the 11th. Is that the 11th? From the 11th of July at 1945 to the very next day with a high of 1943. And that's suggesting that there's weakness to come, but the MACD is still very strong and the stochastic still at 93%. That's really good. So my thinking here is that gold and silver are going to have, a, 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 I've been saying for a little while, a brief timeout the digestive phase, and that we have to wait to see if silver, the I, the I shares, the SLV, closes, and I'll tell you right now what I'd be looking at. If it closes under 18, 85, no, I'd have to go lower. If it closes under 1865 by Tuesday of next week, my thinking is that I'm still going to call it a, a peak E if there's no new high all next week. But I have to keep in mind that a move as powerful as this, unless there is an inverted V-shape, and this is like an Eiffel Tower that really just, and it hasn't done so so far, just powers back and takes away a huge chunk of the gains, this is really bullish action. Now, there's a gap this month, but I don't really, monthly gaps are just purely coincidental that on one day at the end of the month, you're at one level, and the very next day, there's a gap to the upside. That is more serendipitous. I don't treat that as a gap of, of, of importance. Maybe I will later on if we start coming back. But at this particular point, I'm just saying it's just an observation. Most importantly, there happens to be a 200-period moving average at 17.81 in the 
monthly sh monthly uh, chart, and it turns out that 1790 is the high of uh, June. And if that's the case, then all of a sudden the gap and the 200 period moving average happen to coincide. But more importantly, 1829 is the weekly 200 period exponential moving average. And the price seems to me to want to come back and do some testing. I'm not sure that this is the move that takes silver to the 1730s underneath the 1757 uh, nine period moving average. So this is why, are you thinking of, but well, what's your thought on the SLV? Well, that, I, that's the, the weekly was going to determine a lot of my 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 uh, short term move uh, because if it's a if it's a E and then the daily is 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 peaking out that I was going to go short now. But if it's an A, I was going to I was going to hold off and and then oh, okay. buy the, so buy the actually, my thinking is that you should keep both of those factors in mind. My preference right now is just to treat it as if it's an E and that that gold and silver need a timeout. That's my thinking because they've had such big moves. The price is going to tell me, and I can just make it real clear, that if I the SLV closes on a weekly basis underneath $18, that suggests that it's time and it's price and that you're going to go from the high that was just made uh, recently of 1945 down to about the low 17s. And if that's the case, two points from 20 is like a, a nine and a half, maybe nine to a, a 10 percent correction. I don't think that's out of the out of whack. If you wanted to go short, I would probably be looking more at gold than silver because look at the gold chart. Gold chart is, you know what? I'm going to make two suggestions. The one is well, real, quick, short, Basil, uh, real quick, on uh, maybe one thing that I've been staring at this monthly too. It's in, you, it, it's in leg B, correct? Correct. Over? So, so yes. the other thing that I was looking at from a short to to, to strengthen the short uh, side is that if you if you draw there's a there's a looks like a really good channel line on the very top edges of of each of the months, and it looks like it's hitting the top edge of that top channel. Do you agree with that? Oh, if I take it from there, but you know what I'm going to say. Trend lines get, tend to get broken, and they get broken by time, sometimes not price. So very long-term trend lines, I just treat it as an observation. I don't, move, I don't do the trades based on that because at some point you're always going to break a long-term trend line. So let's, let's rather look at it this way, that the monthly um, technicals on SLV have really, have really improved. And I'm going to suggest to you, given the bias that you would like, uh, that you're tossing and turning, deciding whether to short or go long. I'm just going to say whenever I have that, I just say, hey, stay away for a moment. It's not going to cost you anything but time. I would rather be looking to see how the low, the mid to low 18s holds and then look to buy silver at this particular point. And if you're going to short, you've got to short it right now. And you've got to just have the tightest stop because by Monday, it's got to be pulling back. My thinking right now is, why don't you hold off? Let's just let's see how yeah, it is next I week. Agree. You're going to lose nothing but time. Yep. Thanks for Good. calling in. Good observations. Good. As I say, the spy Good. is now the spy itself is in now in leg B. So that's a very good positive. Okay, let's go to Tom in Dallas. Tom, how are you? Great, pretty good. How are you doing, Basil? I'm well, thank you. I'm looking at at GDX. Uh, I'm doing some covered calls on them, and, I, and it ran away, and I kept having to buy back at, at higher prices on the weeklies, and on the weekly options. Okay. Uh, and so I, I let it get called away, and, and and figured that it was a little bit, it was overextended, and it kind of still stayed up there. It would have been still nice to be have done options the last couple of weeks because it didn't run, run, run. It didn't go anywhere, right. So, yeah, where, wait, what's, where, your, what's your position right now? Let me just ask you, What do you have anything left? Is there something it, you're still holding? Yeah, I have uh, I have a couple um, monthlies that are going to expire today in the money, so it'll get called away. And then, and then where do I reload? Okay. So this is what I'm going to be thinking here. The GDX is... For me, I spent a little time on this last night and early this morning, and I decided I'm just going to have to let it play out for the two reasons. That's the reason why I said to uh, to Ben, hold off on doing anything right now. And it's one of the things I've been talking about for a little while. I'm saying, I don't think I really want to be short via the DZZ or something of gold. Or I, I think this is more a case where I want to be buying the next pretty strong pullback in the gold area. Um, I'm looking at the commodities. They're holding really well. So let me let me just throw this out to you. Um, 
I give you parameters on what I'm looking at, then you can base whatever strategy you're going to do on that. You see the inside bar we're having today in the GDX trading at 30.01 down 20 cents. That's really important because what's happening is you've got a potential for a little doji leg D candle with a peak D forming if there's a lower high next week in the GDX. And yet there's an outstanding missing D. There's no other way I can count. It goes after G. You can't go H. There is no H in the Chapman Wave methodology. So what I'm going to do, we've got a little break coming. Are you able to hold on just through the break? And I'll give you a summation when we get back. Oh, yes. Great. Okay. We've got Tom in Dallas holding on. I want to do a little work on this GDX contract because it's acting a little differently to the, to the gold GLD. It's a lot more positive in its price action, but the technicals are weakening a little bit. So I'll be right back. Dow's down four, S&P's down three and a half, Basil Chap and Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll be right back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and uh, the, uh, the what we're looking at here, I decided that I would go to the root of for Tom and Dallas. You're looking at the GDX. I just want you to do the gold and silver again a little bit. I did a, a silver before um, with uh, Ben from Tallahassee. Now I'm going to do the silver. Silver's trading at 20... Uh, point 0.185. It's down a little bit. And you, if you look at this, is what I would normally do is I'd grab my rectangle uh, chart uh, technical tool. I'd do that. And then I'd say, you know what? That looks to me like um, the way it's, it's acting now, it's more like this as the range. And then I would grab the arches and I'd say, hey, I think we're going to get 
an arch formation. So yeah, let me explain what I just did. In the daily chart, what I did is I went from peak D at 21 Point two two five. This is the uh, silver contracts, so and the prices might change at certain points, but not the peaks or troughs. And that was on the fifth of July. Then it pulls back quite sharply and goes down to the nineteen forty five. Is it nineteen twenty eight level? And now it's run up, but it hasn't shown enough strength. Today was really the day that it needed it. It needed to show it's got strength to start a leg B. And then what I do, I automatically say, okay, now we've got a large rectangle like a flag. Uh, pole with the flag on the side, and we should get a peak A, an inside buy signal. It may, it could be the 120 minute chart. It could be the uh, actually it did it in the 120 minute chart. It went to a D and then it pulled back. But normally in the daily it would go peak A, then a B, and then somehow it other it would go towards the high, just below or just above, and then start coming back into the body of the rectangle. This time it hasn't even had enough energy to start a leg B, either an inside B or another B from the last low, which would be at 20.77 or 20.761. So I'm thinking this is going to make an H pattern and that I'm not seeing at this point silver. I, at this point, I'm just not seeing it break down into the 1920s. It's a 20.18, and I will start to see that if it goes below 19.56 or so by Monday. So I'm going to make the suggestion that the, uh, silver's made its peak D, and it's making a peak E in the weekly chart as we speak. Uh, the gold contract itself has made a peak E, and it's, made a, it's making a potential peak G slash B in the uh, weekly chart. So now let's go back to the GDX because the gold stocks have been stronger than the, <clears throat> excuse me, gold stocks have been stronger than gold itself and have been silver stocks have been in some way stronger than silver. So, Tom, <clears throat> this is the way, the way I'm looking at it. My bias now is to say that there should be a downside pullback. I'm not saying a sharp decline, <clears throat> but some kind of, let's call it a consolidation. But going from 29.96 to the 200 period, nine period moving average in the weekly chart 2727, you've got yourself a, about an eight and a half percent decline if that's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, and I need to really see it break the GDA close under 29. I'd say close under 28.85, and then I feel confident that it's going to be pulling back further. At this point, there's enough strength to say maybe there's one more quick little pop-up to make that leg D. So I'm going to make the suggestion I would hold off having a position at this particular point. <laughs> but let's look at it again Tuesday because that gives us a whole, the rest of the day, gives us Monday and gives us a bit, a bit of the opening in the morning to say, ah, now we've got a lot more evidence. But my bias is to say the positions that I would be looking at would be over a, a three-week span to see silver and gold pulling back and that the GDX will head towards the 2830s. Not a big deal, a point and a half, but somewhere around there. Does that help you? 2830, you're thinking, to, to look I, at I, um, yeah, buying and then, Yeah, and then maybe you want to start looking at the position that you'd like to put on because you just got to be have a little flexibility right now but my thinking based on the chart pattern is that there's a really good probability that we're going to have a slow move to the downside. If there's at any point between now and Tuesday morning, if you're able to talk to me again, a gap below 2820 going to, sorry, a pullback going into the gap, that's a little different. 2844 is the low of the uh, July the 1st, and on the 30th of June, it was 2775. That would suggest to me that the time out can be a little bit longer and maybe the price point is that we can go even a little bit lower. That's the reason why I'm saying my bias is if you want to do something now with a downside bias, this is a good time to do it. But if you're really looking for it to stabilize so that you've now got your parameters on the upside and the downside much clearer, I would say a point and a half down makes it, makes it a little easier to say, okay, this is a very concrete base that it should be looking at. And the upside now is very strong resistance, and then I can give you the numbers. Um, I, I, is that does that help you? Yes, yeah, it, it's in a retirement account, so I can't. I'm limited a little bit on the strategies that I can use in it. Okay, so let me do this. If it's in a retirement account, you don't want a two to three day position. You really want a one week position. Uh, no, at least a week position, but you really want it three weeks, maybe even four or more. 
right? Yes. Okay. So if that's the case, I would let the day go through, wait for Sunday night, wait for Monday morning, and if gold is actually holding well and silver is holding well, that's going to give us a real good clue to say there are many buyers out there waiting for declines in the gold and the silver, and then we'll know much better what the very strong support level is. So I, I'm still going to suggest you could wait. But right now, you're in the middle of a range of 30.73 on the GDX and that, let's call it the 2850s. So if you're looking for a middle range to say, I, I, I want to know what I can do for upside protection or, and downside protection, those are the levels that I'd be looking at in terms of your strategy. Okay, so think about, think about that, but uh, I, I also don't think you need to rush into the position at this point. Let's give it a day. Let's, get, let's wait until Monday. Okay. Thank right, you very much for calling. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Yes, you too. Tom in Dallas. And as I say, my bias here is that I think gold and silver are going to be pulling back. Um, but there are um, uh, socioeconomic conditions right now that I think are saying, hey, gold, gold could just hold you because it's kind of a currency of fear in some sense, at least a safety factor. And that might be an issue. So, okay, enough with that. Let's go on to, I want to, I had it already. Oh, really good. I had a lo lovely question. Well, first let me do this. This is a good question because I forgot. I haven't looked at seed for a long time. Seed is S-E-E-D. It is the um, uh, origin Agritech Limited, so it's obviously seed, I mean, it's ag agri, and it's trading at $2.05. This is a tough one in the sense that my bias is to be looking for upside pops. So um, Reed asked the question, um, actually, what was the question? Oh, could you just look at it in the weekly and the monthly time frames? I'm looking at it in the monthly time frame uh, right here. And the monthly time frame, we're only halfway into the month, but it's a really good can because the first time it's trading into this, into those wicks. Look at the way this has long wicks and it always closes lousy for the month. Um, this time it's holding the wick into the middle of the month. So we're about to go to a break. I'm going to do a couple of notations on seed, which is, as I say, the agri, agri tech uh, origin um, ETN. It must be an ETN. And the other question was, also a good question was, um, PBR and PBR is a little different. I get a, a much better feeling for PBR because the monthly now is in leg B, and that is Petrolio, ah, Petrolio Brasileiro, ah, Brasileiro, S A A D S, a Brazilian Petroleum Company, and that's trading at 8.01. And now, now I've got a whole bunch of questions that I'll deal with. Um, I'll be right back. Basel Trap and Target Conditions are Dow's down seven, SB's down four. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Folks, this is not for everybody, but I'm going to suggest, because we just obviously be following the, um, the agri uh, area for a while, trading at 2.04, I'm inclined to say to you, although it's in A, B, C, D, wow, this is tough because I could say, yeah, big deal. It has a bit of a pullback from peak D, but it could go from 204 to 1.95 or 1.91. I mean, that's a big percentage. Reed, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to give you a little bit of a broad uh, a suggestion here. Um, C, trading at 2.04 up one cent. I'm going to suggest you start a position right here at 2.04, but the real position would be a test of between 1.96 and 1.91. In there, I would start a little bit. I would not get carried away because it's two dollars. I wouldn't buy uh, 500,000 shares. It's just, I mean, just please. I, I don't have to tell you, but I'm telling anybody else that's listening. This is where you want to just treat it as, as if it's an option, as if it's a very low price stock, and you a part of your portfolio. It is a small, tiny amount. <clears throat> it could quadruple and it shouldn't make you rich, but it should be really nice to your percentages in your portfolio. Treat it that way rather than say, oh, great, oh, 205, who goes to 305, I've made, you know, 30%. That's not the issue. The issue is <clears throat> there's a cup formation. <clears throat> Some point it should trade back towards the 260 level. It's a 2.05. It needs to hold 1.87 because if it breaks under that, it's just stuck in the range. So I'm suggesting. Start here at 205. If you've already got it, that's great. 187 is where you've got to be a little careful. I would add the real position I would like to start is at 195, 196, 193, somewhere in there. And I would have a small position. If perchance you're in that position and it starts to break the high of yesterday of 215, I would add another small one and my core position would have a stop at the entry point. So no way am I going to take a loss. And the other one becomes your new trading position. I hope that helps you. And that's C. And as far as PBR is concerned, I'm having a little trouble with PBR because it's in already a leg G slash C. If you're holding it, it's at 8.02. Watch out, 731. If it takes that 731, that's a real problem. If it holds very nicely into next week, maybe 772 it pulls back to. All I can say that is if this stock gets into the 8.02, 40 area, that's going to be really positive. It should have a very quick spike at that point. So if you're holding it, fine. If you're looking to get in, for me, I, I, I would have to wait. I just have to have patience. Try to get it in the 772 at the nine period moving average between 772 and 751, small position, and I'd have to wait to see if it's going to test 731. But so far, it looks like it's acting. It's in the right area. It's doing the right things. But I'm just talking about an entry right here, when it's had, it's gone from five, under 550 to over 
I just have to be a little careful. That's the, most, the thing I'm talking about. Okay, PBR that was. Um, a couple of questions. Very good question here. Uh, GT ask about C. Hmm, a lot of people ask, send messages. What about the financials? You know, I think the financials are individually, they might be okay. Let me look at B. C. Um, City is, is just within a trading band. I don't know if I'd want to buy it here. I'd probably say to you, you know what, it's at 44. Every time City gets into the 40, 41, 50 to the um, 39 area, I'd be prepared to take a position and I'd start to exit that position as we get closer to the 44, 45, 46 level. At some point, it will break out and it'll go all the way to the top that was made recently, well, back in April of the 47s. So that's why I'm looking at it. Another part of the question was Wells Fargo. Look at Wells Fargo, WFC, <clears throat> not acting too well. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't get carried away with the banks. I just don't think so. I don't think this is the area to be right now. I think it might be the area for the next phase after the weekly charts. Give me maybe next week or the following week. Give me some kind of a sell signal on that next pullback. I'd be probably be looking at the banks for the next move up. But right now, XLF, just so much resistance in the 33, 23 to 24 area. Um, if, if you want to hold it as a core position and you're prepared to put up with a 10% risk, that's fine. Uh, 21's very strong support in the 21's. I just don't right now, I don't think it's going to break out. Got that out the way. Good, good, good. Next question. I hope I'm not missing anything. Uh, that was there. Uh, Venice isn't the only floating city worth visiting in Italy. Oh, that's um, obviously orbits. That's not a question. <laughs> um, oh, here he has one. Um, oh, Mike, thank you very much for that um, Elliott Wave analysis you gave me, sent me last night. I do appreciate it. <clears throat> I'll get more into it over the weekend. Just haven't had much time, but I, I like your thinking. I like your your uh, the way you plotted it out. Now, basically, what we were looking at is I've been talking, showing for my subscribers. I didn't show it today. There was another chart that I was anticipating. <clears throat> this is what I was anticipating. And then there was just a possibility of a pop up today. And then we start down. And that's what I think we're getting right now. We're in a phase that says um, it doesn't have to be a big sharp drop. But I do think we can have some weakness going into Monday. That's, that's why I'm thinking of Monday, maybe even Tuesday. And then we start up again, go to leg C in the in the daily charts, pull back, and then a leg D, and maybe by Friday, <clears throat> Thursday or from Friday, we conclude the daily, and we are ready for some kind of a deeper pullback. Uh, question in the den. Let me go to that. Um, T T L S Y Y. Yep, that's the same thing. Look, A B C. D, it's in E right now, whatever this thing is, E. And the monthly is in A, A, B, C, D. Daily is in B. So many stocks and indexes have started their leg Ds in the, in the monthly chart. That's good. So this is E. What's the question? <laughs> I forgot to look at the question. What is it, by the way? This is Telstra. Corporation Limited, so it's a limited, um, maybe a foreign country, a com company, and it's trading at 21.7250. Oh, yeah, must be. So um, my thinking here is that it's ready for a little bit of a pullback to the 21 and a half area, to the 20, maybe 20, between 21 and a half and 21. And that's going to be the big test. It's in leg D. It just needs a little time. It's acting very well. I like it. I would like to get it on a pullback if they, I, I personally, but I'm saying I'd be looking at it. Let's look at S C H L. Um, C H L is China Mobile. Yeah, that's a China Mobile. Have a, this is an A. Look, A, B, C. What do you expect in the Chapman Way from the lowest low bar to a peak D? That's where you can, but you don't have to have the deepest correction, and you do in time and price. It's now starting a new move to the upside. A, B, C, D. This might be, in fact, a new B. So I'm going to put this as a slash E slash B. E slash B. I like it. This, is, this one's a little bit stronger. So out of the two that we're looking at, CHL, I think, is the stronger one. That's, that's, my, that's the one I'm favoring at 59.76. So that was the question. 
should you buy CHR? That's the one I would be looking at. You could add them both a little bit less in the one, a little bit more in the other. But so far, this is acting well. 59, I'd have a little. Oh, there goes that buzz. I completely forgot about it. Um, so you are looking at, um, this is not the perfect place for it. But I, nibbling here, I really would like it to consolidate for a week and a half in between 58.40 and 57.40. That, to me, would be really good action, especially if the MACD and Stochastic are well on the weekly. Hope that helps you. So we've got a break coming up. Um, we, we're, we're down some right now. I want to show you this chart. Oh, I completely forgot to show the chart. This is the E-mini. I, I think I did. I showed you a peak F in the 10-minute chart, and um, it's on its way down. And we'll talk about that. In fact, I'll talk about positions. I'll talk about a bunch of things when we get back. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 13, S&P's down 5. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So uh, a couple of things I just want you to do right now. Uh, I had a question from uh, Lee in Tampa. Uh, UVXY. Remember yesterday I spent some time on it. It was trading at about 666. Remember I made a joke, 666? And I said that um, this is the ProShares Ultra VIX short term. And I mentioned that when the Dow made its new all-time high, we had positions, particular positions that we were prepared to put on, even though I'm, I'm bullish. But these were cautionary uh, positions because we're almost all, we're looking at long, long positions with really nice gains in all, almost all the stocks that we have on the long side. But this was on the short side. So I said 666, and if it takes that uh, yesterday's low, 
On 652, that should be the stop, 651. Well, it's trading now at 697, so you're up. Um, at this point, you're up 3.5%. We were fortunate. We have the same sort of thing, but in a different uh, VIX index, and it's up about... Um, 7% right, I think 6 7% right now. But it's just a trade that I think we're going to take until Monday, maybe Tuesday, and then I might even try to reverse back to the upside because I think I'm waiting for leg B, oh, C and D, and I can't even get a peak until Monday, which means there has to be a lower highs all around, S&P, the Dow, etc. And then I have to wait for Tuesday to see if there's a rally so that by Tuesday or maybe Wednesday, you get your next leg. But this is going to be very interesting because you've got your whole political scenario coming up. Anything can happen, right? Uh, but so far, the charts are saying it should be a bullish result. Um, uh, yeah. I was going to get into the politics of politics today. You know, I, the more I think about it, um, I just... It doesn't, it doesn't prove anything. I, I do want to talk about, it. other than I was asked about where is, in my mind, where is uh, Trump in my peaks? I had said it was peak C about uh, six weeks ago or so, maybe two months ago. I think we're starting leg D to the upside in the weekly chart. And that's just a weekly chart. And we can see what happens. Of course, there is no chart because it's in my head. <laughs> so, all right. So the UVXY is trading nicely. It's up 20 cents at 6.93, uh, up 3%. Now, what's really interesting about that, I had a couple of questions like Delta. And you remember I was saying I like Delta. I think it's acting well. But at the same time, it's a counter trend bounce. And so this is it. It's in leg B. It's making a peak B today. I think Delta at 40.06 has to hold 38.50. If it closes under 38.50, the weekly charter says, uh-uh, this is not really the time to have a big move. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to need more time. That was a question there. Um, uh, on a pullback, yeah, I, I'd look for a pullback. 38.83, email me when we get there. Okay, if we do. Um, next queen, Bob wants to, yeah, that was Bob. Um, Goldman Sachs, you remember Goldman Sachs, we were looking at that. Goldman Sachs is a bit better. You remember I said I like Goldman as one of the financials. I'm not treating it as a bank stock per se. So uh, Goldman Sachs is trading at 161. It wants to touch 163.70, the 200 period exponential moving average. That's going to be very important. So I think downside is limited to the 159s. Um, and then I think it should spring back. Well, I hope I covered a bunch of things. Now, quickly, as we're about to go into the uh, final break, um, and then you're going to go to your swimming lesson. Look, here's the VIX index. It made the left side, right side price time match uh, one day early, and now it's trying to turn back at 13.08. Uh, anything can happen is options expiration. But if the VIX actually travels to the 13.30s later today, that means that there should be a pullback of about 35 to 45 points in the Dow, maybe even uh, seven points in the S&P. If it just stays here or, in fact, the VIX starts to go under 12, you'll see, see a bit of a bounce in the, in the market. My thinking is we're going to be pulling back into Monday or Tuesday. That's my thinking, and that's our position just on the very short term. Most of our positions are looking at I'm trying to hold them as intermediate term buys, not just short term buys. We'll see you about that. All right, we're about to sign off. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to be sending charts to my site over the weekend. Please check it out. And if you're new, check out my opening call. I think you'll find it really um, inclusive of all the indexes and all the parameters that we're looking at. And I hope, for, I hope for, uh, you will find it uh, very profitable. And uh, so far, we're having a good, a good week. I'll be back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned to all the programs here at TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.